Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography. So if you have not subscribed my channel and you are new to it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share the videos with others as well. So in this session on environmental geography, we are going to look at the environmental management and conservation in details. So let's learn ahead now. So now let's learn about ecosystem management and conservation. Now, in the previous lectures, remember we have already talked about various challenges, problems, issues related to ecosystem, environment, human influences, right? Imbalances of the system. Now, after the imbalances or the challenges or problems of management, it's time to understand the management efforts, the conservation efforts that is required to restore the balance to the system, right? So, in ecosystem, we must understand this act of management. What is this? The management by direction or manipulation or change that can bring a balance, right? So there are two themes common to most of these definitions of ecosystem management, if you re remember. One common theme is management should maintain or improve what? Ecosystems. So maintenance or improvement. There are two things. Maintenance is talking about whatever is a problem. Just maintain it to that level. Don't let it increase. Keep it under that control, maintenance, right? But improvement is when you keep it under control at the same time, also try to improve the quality. So if not, let it increase, at least leave it to the same level or reduce the levels of problems. That is important in management. The second part is ecosystem should provide a range of goods and services to current and future generations. It means we are talking about the longevity, right? We are talking about the continuation. We are talking about sustenance. So remember the sustenance is the word here. Sustainable development is the basic concept when we talk about inter and intergenerational equity principles. Right. So this is important in terms of these two important points here that one is the maintenance on improvement. The other point is the continuation, the sustenance for longer time. That is important as a basic management principle of ecosystem. Now let's elaborate further more. So if you look into this word called conservation and the word called preservation. So what is the difference here? Let's understand this. So conservation concept typically attempts to make humans relationship with environment sustainable while still extracting natural resources. So when we say we were conservative, we are conserving nature. It means it's not saying that we are not extracting anything. We are extracting from natural resources, but at a pace which is more sustainable, then it is conservative, right? So conservationists do what? They typically support measures that reduce human use of natural resources. This is important point as the concept of three R's, right? Or if you say four R's, reduce, reuse, recycle and also refuse unhealthy practices. So this is four R's if you take that, right? So reduce, reuse, recycle and refuse to fall into the trap of wrong ecological unethical practices. So this is beneficial for human beings that we are extracting resources for our development but also trying to reduce our load on environment at the same time this is a conservationist approach right so ecosystem conservation approach is about this particular thing so they would likely support a policy that gave tax refunds to people who installed solar panels so if you have seen people get subsidies or tax refunds in various countries because they use solar panels or they follow alternative energy so that is one of the important aspects. But remember, not one that bans the construction of roads and national parks. This is not conservationist approach, right? So banning the construction of road activity or developmental activity does not fall under conservation approach. Conservation is also referring to people's choices, right? To consume less, like taking shorter showers or installing solar panels to reduce your water usage, right? To reduce your electricity consumption. So this is about the conservation approach. Now let's look at what is preservation approach. What is preservative here? So preservation typically refers to setting aside of areas of land. Remember when we declare certain areas as this particular restricted area that you cannot access it, you cannot do some construction, then it is this preservation approach. We are trying to preserve it, right? It should be human free, free from obvious marks of human influence like roads or fire pits or those sole human inhabitants or native people there, right? So this is a preservation approach. 
right conservation and preservation two hands in terms of management approach right so like conservationist preservationists would like to support a policy that gave tax refunds to people who installed solar panels on their homes but they would also support a policy that banned the construction of roads so that is a difference between a conservationist and a preservationist so remember these two differences that i have talked about in terms of conservation and preservation because both of them hand in hand as a complementary factors are important for ecosystem management here right now look at the need for environmental management why is it needed after all because something is there in terms of stress something is there in terms of problem there is some challenge that we have taken up unless that is there some scarcity is there or something as a challenge for management is there there is no need for management so here when we are saying that we need to manage environment it means there are certain things that must follow so what are those things environmental or natural resources are finite they are not infinite that is the first point so we have finite resources then environment is also a closed system it means it's not getting anything from outside right whatever remains in the system keeps circulating in the same system in the same loop so if you have a problem it will affect the entire system keep affecting and affecting and recycling and again and again right so that is the thing it is a closed system here then environment is a natural gift and thus a public property now this point has led it to, to lots of menace because we take it for granted at many times people have taken it for granted that is a public property a natural gift that's why we have stopped being careful about usage of water natural abundant water so what is the impact now the water comes in packaged drinking water why because we did not care about the natural water same thing happens to air the normal breathable air is now getting polluted so eventually people have to you know use certain methods like air purifiers in their homes right that is important so this is where we talking about a finite or closed system here right human induced environmental degradation is stretching the limits of ecological resilience here the capacity to withstand the natural capacity to give you a cushion for the amount of pollution is now getting filled to the brim right so when we say that the filling up of the river basin to the brim to the top and then flash flood happening it's a similar situation that nature gives us enough chances right and when the entire thing is full to the brim it will outburst so natural outbursts happen natural environmental degradation happens we have seen so many avalanches landslide floods so many things happening right so this is a natural check that nature keeps doing on its own course right but remember anthropogenic influences where we are right now the anthropocene in terms of geological time scale as well this is the time of human beings when they dominate on the entire earth so things are not happening in terms of natural flow in geological time scale as it should be they are happening in terms of human time so we are more concerned about what is going to happen in next 30 years in next 50 years by the end of the century this is what we are trying to look into right so human beings are the major cause and are responsible for solutions as well that's where management comes that we are the cause so we need to find the solutions right that is about management stuff so let's look into various categories of protected areas remember the preservation approach and the conservation approach promulgated by iucn international union for conservation of nature so what is this holistic ecosystem approach it's talking about bioregional approach so many global conventions have happened on this landscape scale of management right and we have seen several conventions that needs to be talked here one is convention on biological diversity convention on wetland ramsar sites right we are talking about ramsar site in india as well many additions have happened then convention of combating desertification convention on migratory species world heritage convention so these conventions at international level are one of the initiatives in terms of management because awareness leads to better management better dissemination of information better action plan so government initiatives incorporates all these important suggestions that are made at these conventions so that's important so several of these protocols to regional seas conventions which focus on same aspects of natural resource conservation right so that's why these things are important in terms of management efforts now let's look at particular hurdles that we are talking in terms of environmental management that what is this hurdle what are these problems 
that we face while management. So globalization, which is free market economy, regulation of WTO and denial to share historic burden of environmental degradation by developed countries. So often we say that there is a problem between developed and developing country, right? In terms of the share of what should be in terms of the burden of environment, right? So developed countries say that developing countries are more pollutant, right? Because they have more population, their land use is different. And in return, developing countries say that it's our chance to get developed. You have done it when it was your chance. So this debate has been continuing for a century now, right? That is a problem here. Then rapid growth of human population in developing and underdeveloped nations is a major issue. Irreversible and rapid rate of urbanization, industrialization and consequential natural resource depletion that limits to growth also talked, right? So that's important and rapid change of social outlooks and values with consumption driven and use and throw culture. Now remember this use and throw culture is very dominant in today's world. Consumption culture, right? So we are generating lots of waste because of this culture, right? So that has a lot of things to do with this environmental management, our cultural outlook, our social outlook and bad governance is one of the things that is part of mismanagement. If there is a political nexus with industrialists, Remember what happens to environmental policies and its execution, right? So executions will face the problems here, right? The permissions will be given for mining activities, for deforestation, where the clearances should not be given if there is a nexus. So because of corruption in the governance, there may be problems, right? So that is also one of the hurdles. Then limitations in enforcing environmental laws and regulations because of some local community management issues in terms of local customs. Like if you go to some village and they worship a mountain, and if you want to say that, oh, this mountain is a source of mineral, then there will be a clash between community and government, right? So many places in this country and world have faced certain problems. Social and religious impediments are the major hurdles at some places of management as well. So remember, environmental management from the social to the economic to the environmental, it has all the facets. And that is where the entire management needs an integrated approach. Right. So an ecosystem management has these steps if you want to look at. Right. So there are certain steps. If you want to manage, you have to follow the steps. First of all, selection of an ecological meaningful unit. It means we need to define our unit scale, area, eco region, landscape, watershed. Then we need to conduct an integrated assessment. Right. So we need to look into terrestrial aquatic all those ecosystems. We need to socioeconomic assessment as well. Right. And then look into the report of the area. Unless we assess the area, assess the problems, know the challenges, how can we suggest the alternative solutions, right? So third step is to develop a range of management alternatives, right? So for example, if a community is dependent upon forest product and we say that don't cut the forest, so we must provide them with alternatives. How will they earn their livelihood? So that is when we talk about management alternatives, right? So desired future condition. Then we look into selecting an alternative and then implementing it. For example, if we are setting up a particular, say, handloom industry or for that matter, a cottage industry, and we are providing opportunities, jobs to local villagers who were earlier dependent upon the forest produce. So then this alternative will save the forest ecosystem in that. That's important. And finally, also after that implementation, regular monitoring of these projects is important at the same time, right? So this is the entire stepwise analysis of an entire management process that needs to be followed, right? So there are certain components of ecosystem management here listed. You can read them one by one. You can pause the video here. For example, consideration of connections between different levels of biodiversity like genetic species, population, ecosystem, landscape diversity. Inclusion of appropriate scales to include relevant ecological processes. Acceptance of human society as part of ecosystem, not as external. Remember this ecological principle that human being is as equal to any other species. This feeling is important here, right? Emulation of natural disturbance regimes in order to maintain biodiversity. Then maintenance of ecological integrity. That is important, right? Then consideration of appropriate time scales for the planning. 
Some planning can be done in few years, some can take a long term, that is important to recognize. And when we introduce some management practices, some experiments, we must understand its design, its inclusion of local communities, interagency coordination and as well as communication with the society. So it's not some single agency's or government's role, it has to be an integrated approach of ecosystem management that will be effective that's important to remember here then the conservation of ecological resources can be approached in different ways and some examples through species preservation that is protected areas declaration like ghee lions right then rhinos in india assemblage protection several species of plants and animals are preserved together in some habitats like bharatpur bird sanctuary examples so you can give other examples as well then you have certain habitat protection Right In certain areas like national parks and bird sanctuaries, biosphere reserves we have created where you have a habitat protection unit. Right, We protect habitat of particular species and we'll be talk that in also in the paper 2 discussions when we talk about specific areas in India as well, Right, in India chapters. So conservation of ecological resources are applied in different ways in preservation approach as well as conservation approach it depends upon how we are integrated the entire system to understand and implement right that's important to remember here and lastly if you observe this particular diagram this is coming from a AICTE report all india council for technical education which released an environmental policy 2020 so if you look into this, this is an integrative approach which we are talking about. Plastics and environment was the theme. You see plastic pollution and all these things associated to it, right? So plastics and net zero emissions, biodegradability, plastic recycling, plastic waste management, plastic pollution, plastic reduction and replacement. So when we are talking about a one problem, we must understand the different facets and integrate when we want to do this management. Right. So this is when we are talking about the integrated management of environment. Right. That is important to understand. So now when in details we have talked about and discussed about the various aspects of management, the practices, the particular attribute that is associated to the management practices of environment. In the sessions to come, we'll be looking more into different aspects of environmental geography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.